Hi, Ron here again. Welcome to Reconfiguring the 11G Domain. This is the sixth in a series of eight videos about upgrading Oracle SOA Suite to version 12C. At this point, we're well into the upgrade process. We've created new database schemas and upgraded our existing database schemas and active instance data. In this video, we'll run the reconfiguration wizard to reconfigure our 11G domain. The wizard will apply reconfiguration templates to the domain. It'll also update schemas, scripts, and other files that support Fusion middleware products. We've said this before, but it's a good time to remind you that if you're using Oracle Business Activity Monitoring, or BAM, you can't upgrade BAM 11G to BAM 12C using the standard upgrade procedures. Refer instead to Upgrading SOA with Oracle Business Activity Monitoring section of the Upgrading SOA Suite and Business Process Management Guide for more details. The topology we're using for our walkthrough doesn't include Oracle BAM, so we'll proceed as planned. Recall that for our demonstration we have two hosts, and both hosts have domain files. We're going to run the reconfiguration wizard on the host with the admin server, reconfiguring the domain on that host. Then, after one more domain update, we'll copy the upgraded domain to the other host. We'll see that in the next video in this series. Remember that the steps we're about to follow reflect the needs of our particular topology, so they show one path through the reconfiguration wizard. Your environment may be different, so be sure to consult the documentation before performing these tasks in your environment. The reconfiguration wizard is found in the Oracle Common Common Bin folder under the new Fusion Middleware 12C Oracle Home. We've added two parameters to specify a log file and the maximum logging priority to capture the highest level of detail in the log. Let's start the reconfiguration process. The Select Domain window prompts us to provide the location of the existing 11G domain. The domain will be reconfigured in place, which means the 11G domain will be modified and no 12C domain directories will be created. Double check our entry and click Next. The Reconfiguration Setup Progress window displays the progress as reconfiguration templates are applied. This prepares the domain for reconfiguration. When the process completes, we'll click Next. The Domain Mode and JDK window displays the domain mode set for the current domain. This is set in Fusion Middleware Control and can't be changed here. The JDK displayed is the one that was used to start the wizard. You could browse and select a new one. You might choose to do that if the one displayed isn't supported in 12C. In our case, the JDK is supported, so we'll click Next. If you have any data sources that were created using the WebLogic Server Console rather than the Configuration Wizard when 11G was installed, this window appears. We could use this window to supply connection details for these data sources, but we're going to have a better opportunity to do so later on, so we're going to ignore this for now and click Next. Here too, we can advance to the next window. Recall that one of the 12C schemas we created in the video titled Creating Database Schemas for 12C was the Service Table, or STB, schema. On this window, we specify connection details for that schema. The Reconfiguration Wizard will use the Service Table to load other 12C schema credentials automatically. Credentials for our existing 11G data sources will be preserved. Double check our service name, host name, and password, and we click Get RCU Configuration. The connection is successful, so we can advance to the next window. The JDBC Component Schema window lists all of the JDBC data sources and their connection details. 
We can modify the connection information for any data source here. Here, we can test all of the data source connections at once by selecting the checkbox at the top left. Click Test Selected Connections. Check all the way to the bottom of the list. We have all green check marks. That's good news, so we'll advance to the next window. If the domain you're configuring is using a per host node manager, the node manager window appears. It allows you to select the node manager configuration to use for the reconfigured domain. We're going to accept the default domain location, which is displayed here. Note that it's under the original 11G domain structure. In the node manager configuration section, we're going to migrate the existing per host node manager configuration to a per domain configuration. We'll need to specify where the node manager is currently located, which in our case is under the 11G WebLogic server directory. Finally, we need to specify the new node manager credentials, the ones we'll use to start the node manager in the reconfigured domain. Supply username and password, and click Next. If you want to modify any advanced configuration settings, you can select them here. You'll see additional windows according to which ones you select. For example, you can select the Managed Servers, Clusters, and Coherence option to add, modify, or delete Managed Servers, Clusters, or Machines from the domain. Select Deployments and Services to customize how application deployments and services are targeted to servers and clusters. Our topology doesn't require any advanced configuration, so we'll move on. The Configuration Summary window displays our planned reconfiguration. We check everything one more time and then click Reconfig. The reconfiguration is underway and we're apprised of the progress here. When the reconfiguration is complete, we proceed. The reconfiguration success screen reports that we were, well, successful in the reconfiguration of the domain on the first of our two hosts. And so, we finish. Remember that the choices we made in this demo were appropriate for our environment. To determine the correct path through the reconfiguration wizard for your environment, consult the documents you see listed on screen. In this video, we reconfigured the 11G domain. Next. We'll upgrade additional domain configurations. Then we'll copy the upgraded domain to the other host. Both of these tasks are covered in the next video, Upgrading Domain Configurations. Until then, I'm Ron Pinkerton. Thank you for your time and attention.